Janet Jackson has said, every body type is different, that's what makes you unique. What makes you special is you, and you are different from the next person, end quote. I think it is really true that there is no weight limit on beauty, yet over and over I meet women who want to just cover. Our guest today dresses women all over the country and will teach us how to use the clothing to make the best of our figure type. This information is critical to help us love what we sew. All today on Fit to Stitch. Fit to Stitch is made possible by Kai Scissors. Plano Sewing Center. Elliot Berman Textiles. Benno's Buttons. Imitation of Life. And Clutch Nails. I'm really looking forward to this episode. It doesn't matter how many times I deal with dressing, every time I talk to someone who just does it for a living, I learn something more. Today I have on Roxanne Karn, and I'm so excited to have her. She is so good at what she does. She does women's wardrobe specialist. And you go through their wardrobe and you just help them. Because I think over the years as they gain weight, and we do it such a little bit at a time, that we no longer kind of are on course anymore. It becomes too emotional for us. Absolutely, Peggy, and thank you so much for having me no, on your show. I'd love to have you, thank you. But you hit the nail on the head. Um, as women, we typically are in a role where we're nurturing others all the time. And over the years, we kind of prioritize, prioritize ourselves a little bit lower on the sure, total we're pole. all the way at the bottom. Right, <laughs> and, um, and before you know it, years and years have gone by, and one of the ways in which we are seeing that kind of come to life is through what we wear. Sure. And I think... Oh, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, and you know, you often are sometimes get in a space where you know you want to improve your image, but you don't know how, you and then you settle. Because it's been so yeah. long. Right, it's been so long. That's where you come in. Absolutely. So you're gonna shortcut it all for us. Absolutely. And you're gonna help us. That's the goal, the That's goal what is I'm to help. For. Yeah, okay. to help, to understand, because when you know better, you do better. Absolutely. And that applies to every aspect of your life, but certainly can apply to how you dress yourself. And I think as we've talked and gone over these issues, they're not mm -hmm. difficult issues. I think no. it's just for some reason, that weight gain haunts us over and over again. Absolutely. So we're gonna take away the weight gain. Over and over, we're gonna say we're that. We're gonna just... strip all that down. Okay, all right, where do we start? <laughs> okay, so really the, the concept of dressing for yourself is going to be based off of your body shape as opposed to your size. So I wanna strike that myth out because a lot of women that I work with initially, they come to me thinking, oh, I must be a certain size to be able to be stylish or to look great, but that's absolutely not true. When you learn how to dress for your body type, it doesn't matter if you're a size two or a size 22. If you have the same body type, as a size two or 22, the concepts are going to be the exact same. But what's important is that, and what we realize over the years is that this isn't something that we are taught. And this is something that is just not, you know, something that's inherent to people. It's not, right? I agree with that. You know, but the beauty about it is that it's not rocket science, but you can understand the concept, uh, you can apply it to yourself, and it really does reframe how you just attack your wardrobe every day. So do you think mm -hmm. it helps sometimes to think back when you were 12 yeah. or 14 or 16 when we most of us were smaller sizes mm -hmm. and we had more freedom a lot of times with what we wore or what we didn't Perhaps. have the inhibitions? It seems like we gain more inhibitions as we get we do. older or put on that weight. And, and I think a large part of that, Peggy, is just media. We have so much information coming to us oh, visually, right? Especially through social media. So you're automatically always comparing yourself 
against someone else. Yeah, it happens pretty quickly. Right, and you just kind of, again, in that process, lose a sense of yourself. But I think it's important to realize that you are beautiful no matter what size you are, no matter what height, but once you understand the concepts of how to dress for your body type, all of that melts away and you'll look fabulous. I always like to say, you'll look fabulous whether you're going to the ball game or to the ballroom. Because you'll feel good. <laughs> you feel good, and yeah. that's what it's all about. When you look good, you feel good, and one thing I'd like to share is that when you're in that great space when you are looking good, mm -hmm. you're not distracted by the would have, could have, should have in terms of, oh, I wish I didn't wear that today, right? Oh, that's you're, interesting. Yeah, you're not getting distracted with those thoughts, you know, on, throughout the course of your day, but what it does allow you is to be the best version of yourself to the people that you care about the most, your friends, your family, your community. And everybody you interact with that day. Right, because you don't yes. have that little thing on the, your shoulder nagging you saying you shouldn't have worn that. Shoulda, coulda, woulda, yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's really cool. So body types, it gets yeah. down to body types. What are are, what yeah. are those? I mean, are they sincerely that different? They, they are, and the I would say for the most part, women fall into one of five body types. Okay. You're either going to be bigger on the top, which means that you have more bust, than you do waist and hips, bigger in the middle where your midsection. And nobody likes their body type. The minute yeah, you you're, started you're to right say about that, that, you know, because those women who have no rear end, the first body type you just said, I thought to myself, they wish they had. Yeah, and the women they who were have no rear ends else. don't want it. It seems like yes. no matter what you are, you, you want, want the, the grass other. is always greener, right? Boy, no kidding. Okay, sorry. Yeah. So we have the first one that is busty. Yes, and, busty, that's bigger nothing. on the top. Okay. And then bigger in the middle where your midsection is bigger than your bust or your hips. Okay. Or I should say, and your hips. Okay. Bigger on the bottom. So this is what people commonly refer to as being pear shaped. Okay, right? sure. Right? Sure. Um, you have proportional, which is more of an hourglass figure. And then no curves, which doesn't necessarily mean that you don't have a bust and or hips, but basically your proportions are pretty much the same through from oh, your bust, up to waist, down. and hips. Oh, yeah. they're straight body. Straight body. They're quite, and they're a lot of athletic ladies. Are straight sports, bodied tend to be straight bodied as well. Also, um, fashion models. Oh. They tend to really have not a lot of curves and almost the same proportion. So there's really not a best. There's just differences between there's them all. No, there's no best, but I will say when you are dressing for yourself, and this is the, this is the exciting part, this okay. is the key right here to style. <laughs> what you want to do, Peggy, is ultimately aim to provide visual proportion between the top half of your body and the bottom half of your body. Okay, that's a big statement. So let's just take yeah. that in. Yeah. So let's say if you're straight, there's yes. no difference. And so you're visually trying to make it look like there is a difference. Right, exactly. So then can we say that a, a slight curve is is the more preferred? So, is that kind well, of what we're going for? The proportional body type is okay. what, if you don't have a naturally proportional body type, that's a body type that we want to try to give in uh, the illusion of. Okay, because and it's more feminine. Is, it's feminine, but it, yeah. all it is is just balance. Visually, your bust looks oh. the same as your hips. That's it, and we're creating So it's more waste. a perception of people looking at us that it looks balanced to their Absolutely. brain, not so much that it's better or worse. No, and there's not one body type that is better than the other, okay. but we just want to create balance. That's all that we want to do. Balance and harmony, I like that. Yes. All right, and you can do it, any body type can do <laughs> it. Any body type can do it. Okay, Roxanne. Yeah. And this is, what, this is the fun <laughs> part of, of dressing and dealing with How did you clothes get into and this? fabrics. Well, I so I was born and raised in New York City. Okay. And I This is the capital of fashion. The capital of fashion right. and I just was always in awe of the people that I saw on the street from different cultures representing their own and expressing themselves sure. through their wardrobe. Sure. But what I paid particular attention to, Peggy, were what women were wearing and how when, you know, they've got an amazing outfit on and it draped on their body beautifully, the confidence that came with that. Now, and I you wasn't caught that. You well, that. I did, but you know, I don't think I was able to put it or articulate exactly what that was until years later, but I was always inspired by it. Oh, and it made me really realize that gosh, fashion is an art form and really being able to see how designers how they design for women's bodies mm -hmm. um, and having that inspiration, that's something that was always a part of me. Um, so interestingly enough, my first career was actually in corporate HR. Okay. I was in the business world for about 15 years, okay. but through the work that I did there, um, having 
just exposure to a lot of fantastic women and also helping people through change in their lives, um, I really saw how image in, can impact you professionally and personally. And when I decided to strike out on my own, I wanted to marry the two in terms of supporting women in some way, but also my love for fashion always came back. So I, that's how I became a personal stylist. I just think that's so exciting. So when you mm -hmm. talk about all these years that women sometimes we give and we give when we get here at the yeah. bottom mm -hmm. the best way to maybe start our way up is clothing absolutely it's just it's good a, clothing or it's, just dressing ourselves a, and putting you know a, approaching it with intent okay right just as how we oh, put that's a makeup good clarification on. with intent with intent right um, because you want to you want to aim to do it right okay. um, just as you know we put time to get our hair done our nails done you know putting makeup on Invest sure. in your clothing as well because that's representing who really who you are. That makes sense. So let's see the body types. Yeah. So I I want I would love to bring out my assistant Rosa. Okay. Um, who she her body type my lovely assistant Rosa. <laughs> so her body type is what you would classify as being bigger on the bottom, meaning that the circumference of her hips and her bum are larger than. Her and even though bust. she doesn't look like it, but you have to use a measure. You have to measure. Don't you? Absolutely. You can't really do how you feel. Yes, and you I can't have. tell you how many women I work with who have the the preconception that they're one particular body type, but not. then I do the measurements and the numbers don't lie. Ah. And then when we're putting them in the right clothes because of the body type, they're now seeing how their silhouette should look. So you're dealing with women all over the country. Yeah. All kinds of women. All all kinds, do they, ages, Do shapes. they listen to you? They do. They do. Because That's exciting. The, beauty, the beauty about it, Peggy, is that it's the change is immediate. Once you start putting I on see. the right type of clothing, they they see I mean, it's not even potential anymore. Sure. It's how they actually look. Sure. And they look beautiful and they feel beautiful. Yeah. 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 So with Rosa, with her body type being bigger on the bottom. Ultimately, what we want to do is bring attention to the top half of our body. Sure. And this is where the fun comes in with choosing the different types of garments. So this particular, this beautiful satin top that she has on, we have a nice puffy this is sleeve. This so pretty. Right. This so pretty. This is so pretty. You know, it's funny. I never really recognized what puffy sleeves did. Yeah. They balance. They balance because here, visually, her shoulder ends right, right in here. But with the puffy sleeve, it sure. looks a little bit more pronounced and falls in line with her hip line, right? But then we also are drawing attention to the top half of the body just through specific elements. So here, we've got a plunging neckline. Mm -hmm. And I will say, because she's not doesn't have a massive bust, she can get away with it. Mm -hmm. um, if you have a larger bust, a plunging neckline probably would be just a little bit too much. Right, right, um, right. But she can get away with it. But you know, for instance, when you look at her, Peggy, what's the first thing that you look at? You're looking at her top. I am. You're absolutely. not looking at her bottom. And her lipstick looks so pretty with her top. Yeah, <laughs> I can't we, get away from that. New, beautiful <laughs> new lip. But, um, but I'll share with you as well, um, in terms of creating that balance and proportion, what we also want to do is create or accent her natural waist. So this is a beautiful top because visually she's got this twist tie right in the middle. So we're creating that hourglass silhouette. So you're not looking at her and thinking, oh, she's not busty, right? You're looking at her and thinking, we've got some even proportion. Yeah, she looks beautiful. She and looks that, beautiful. That's what I, when I saw her, I said she looks beautiful. Yeah. I didn't um, even go into the body type yeah. actually, which is really interesting. Right, because you're thinking, wow, she nailed it. She did. Because we're leveraging clothes in the right way. Oh, cool. One other thing I do want to point out about dressing for your body type, if you are bigger on the bottom like Rosa is, is you want to keep the bottom half streamlined. You want to wear darker colors. So in a sense, you are kind of detracting from that because we want attention up here for sure. her. Right. Sure. So darker colors on the bottom um, as well as very clean lines are going to help us achieve that. And I'll just show you if you want to turn around for me, Rosa, the back. So even from the back. Oh, how adorable. Look how stunning. Right. I'll turn around a little bit more. 
So we've got a beautiful cutout here. So oh, even from the adorable. back, if you were to see her from the back for the first time, you're drawn to her top half. You're not paying attention to what's kind of going on in her hip, in sure. her bum area. Sure. Adorable. So, um, so yeah, so this is Rosa's look. Very beautiful. And when you look at her, ultimately, she looks very balanced. She does. Yeah, very pretty. Yeah. Very well done. Thank you, Rosa. And I would never think her hips were larger than her bust. Right. Only the that's... tape measure will know for sure. <laughs> I mean, really, Only truly. the tape measure. Yeah. But that's why we, you know, when we're styling our clothing, we're doing it in a way where we are, we're leveraging color, we're lever leveraging pattern, and we're strategically placing it on our body for where sure. we want the attention to oh, go. That was good. Yeah. And I've never liked puff sleeves, but I get the puff sleeves serve a purpose. Yeah, which is for exactly. some body types. They Absolutely. have a tendency to come in as a style, and everybody thinks they should wear puff sleeves, but it's mm -hmm. not the case. It's specific for... If I you're bigger on the bottom, a puff sleeve is going to be a great got it. piece oh, for you. I think this is great. Thank yes. you, Roxanne. This is so good. This is what I needed. <laughs> <laughs> this is what we all need, yeah. right? But, it, but yeah. that wasn't a hard concept. No, and it's that's not. What... It's all easy. I think I just wouldn't have put it all together. Exactly. Very nice. So let's bring out Margaret, who okay. is a different body type, a lovely, beautiful Margaret. Um, and so Margaret's body type is bigger on the top. So kind of the reverse of Rosa's, right? Okay. And bigger on the top, again, is where you have more bust than you do um, waist and hips. Okay? Again, by tape measure. By tape measure, okay. right? So what we wanna do is the opposite. When we're bigger on the top, we wanna bring attention to the bottom half of our body. Okay. Um, our legs are actually our assets. You wanna show leg whenever possible. It's amazing what good legs she's got. I know, because, and you know what? Because she's wearing a great that. skirt. Wow, it is. Right? It's really cute. But when we look at Margaret's outfit, when you look at her for the first time, again, your eyes are drawn to the pattern. The print. The, the print. Yeah. But also what we've done here is that we've put Margaret in an A-line skirt. So this is important because what we're doing again, we're creating that hourglass look. When you wear an A-line skirt, nobody really knows how big or small your hips are underneath. You're right. But it's what a they see, it's a secret, right? It's an illusion. But what they see is proportion. She looks even. So she I'm gonna does. show you something. If I were to convert her skirt into like a pencil skirt fitted, she looks top heavy, she does. does she not? She does, right? she looks like she's gonna fall over. She's gonna topple over, right? <laughs> I hate to say that. Right? We don't, we don't want you to topple over, Margaret. I can't believe what a difference so that makes. It makes a huge difference. Yes, so this does. is why we need to put her in something a little bit vol voluminous on the bottom half, because wow. we're concealing that smaller bottom half for her, but we're making her, we're giving her shape. Um, and I so think- so interesting to me is because yeah. I'm not that body type, mm -hmm. I've always wanted that body type. Where you would have yeah, some where more. Yeah, you have no rear end. <laughs> you know, and you can. <laughs> but I can see there's challenges with every kind. It's not there really, is. there's no better. There, there is. And mm -hmm. then also, too, you know, you also have to think about your preferences as well. Sure. Um, if you're thinking about your um, body in terms of the garment types, um, mm -hmm. that is really what's going to be helpful. And then, of course, you know, playing with pattern, um, eyes again go straight to go straight to her beautiful skirt here. Would you put a belt on her at all? So we could, ever? yeah, we could add, if we wanted to really, really define her waist, mm -hmm. we would, for this particular outfit, we would do a nice wide belt. Because what and that'll why? do. You don't typically think that. You think of a little skinny belt. Because women a lot of times yeah. don't like that wide belt. You can do, you can do a skinny belt depending on, so a skinny belt would work best for a dress like mine where it's a sheath dress. It's extremely fitted. But we've her, her top here has a little volume, mm -hmm. a, little, mm -hmm. a little bit of volume here. If we put a skinny belt here, we probably wouldn't be able to You'd see lose it. it. Right? I see. So because of the ensemble here, I would definitely go with a wide belt. But what the belt will do mm -hmm. is draw you, draw attention to the smallest part of her waist. Got it. So what I want to point out too with Margaret, she's got a lovely figure. What I wanted to do was when we were getting dressed, her, she wanted to put her, the, the elastic waist down here. Right? She's like, I said, where do you normally, if you put this on, on your own, where would you put this? And she had the elastic waist down here. And I was like, Margaret, no. We want to bring it up closer to your natural waist, that smallest part of your torso, because then 
this is just hugging onto her midsection. Sure. Right? Sure. And that was a little bit of like a moment of clarity, right? Yeah. We just had to bring it up a little bit yeah. and now we can really see that A. It looks great. It she looks, looks beautiful. Great. Yeah. Absolutely you really beautiful. Do. Thank you, Margaret. Yeah, that is so pretty. It's amazing <laughs> when you pull that skirt in too. You can see the you difference. You can really see the top immediately. Heavy. Right. <laughs> It's so, it's just amazing how the clothes, the, so the goal is balance. It's all about always balance. Always balance. You always want to sh strike the balance and, and it doesn't so matter what So I get that you when wear. you say that, it really can't be about the body. If you're balancing anything, it's just yeah. that you're balancing it on you. So you're we can't it take it personal. We can't make it about us. No. Nope. You're just playing a balancing game as to how to do it. Yeah. Let's do some more. This is fun yeah, stuff. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so um, I, this, I think this is a great dress um, because it is slightly tapered inward. So we are seeing a little bit of the waist here. Um, but I, what I wanted to point out was that if you really wanted to define the waist even more, employing the use of a belt. So you're Again. not afraid of belts. Definitely not. In fact, but don't you think Penny, a lot of women most, are afraid of belts? Yes. Yeah. Most women that I work with, the only belts they own are for functional purposes, just to put in their jeans or trousers. Yes. And that's it. They don't. Yeah. They never ever think about putting the belt in their natural waist. Right? But I think it's simply because we just don't know how. Yeah. Like, well, like when you said to wear a wider belt on that, that mm -hmm. just, I, that, it, it makes sense now that you've said it. Yeah. Because that little belt would just get lost. It I would mean, get it'd lost. be silly looking. Right. That wider belt really makes a difference. Absolutely. But it doesn't have to be a big contrast. It can just be kind of a tone on tone, but it just True. defines that. I know I'm repeating what you said, but I'm just making sure I understand it. But it's important. It. Yes. Yeah. And you're, but you're spot on. You're spot on. Okay. And remember, this is all about visuals. Yeah. The illusion. Yeah. Um, yeah. So what I wanted to point out with, with this dress here is if we wanted to define the waist even more, then we could put a belt on. See, so she looks so much thinner than I me. Mean, she, <laughs> Miss Miss she, Mannequin yes, here, our looks lovely mannequin, so much thinner. So do you see how that um, is sagging just a little bit? But 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 if we just draw in that waist, yeah. Do you see we the the proportion yeah. comes to light now? Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. We're just creating that waist and it's so so simple. Talk to me about this cuz I love print pants. Yeah. But print pants are not for So if you are bigger on the bottom, yeah. This is not what you want to do. Got it. <laughs> because again, we like Rosa, when we were bigger on the bottom, we want to bring attention to the top. Got it. But this a piece like this, it would be great for Margaret, for instance, where she is bigger on the top and we want to bring attention here. Then what about this one? I love this. I love it too. <laughs> and this is an empire waist dress. And this particular style is perfect for those of us that are a little bit bigger in the middle. Or our midsection oh, is bigger so, than our bust so, and hips. Because it really pulls in. Yes. So you, you're not emphasizing the waist in this particular case. In this particular, for this particular garment, we're not. Okay. Um, but what it does is that because we've got that high, that high waist right under the bust line, then you see how the fabric just cascades. Mm -hmm. It gently conceals any trouble areas in the middle. So the balance is obtained by making this part, in, or making this part actually smaller. In exactly. Proportion to this. Yes really also lengthening, visually lengthening the torso. Sure. Because we don't know where the torso ends and begins. Because it's right? wider, it's, it's thicker. It's a little bit wider. Oh, exactly. I love it. Okay, Roxanne, this is too good. <laughs> that all makes perfect sense. I want to ask you one question about this. Yeah. This is a textured fabric. Yes. Does, how does texture come into play? So texture comes into play when you're thinking about volume. So for example, if you are bigger on the bottom, we do not want to have thick oh, fabrics, thick oh, tweeds, wools. We want to, again, keep it streamlined as, and light as possible. So you really do need to consider the weight of a fabric and where it's going to go on your body. Roxanne, thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank it you, Peggy. Great. It's been great. my pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> you know, it, I think these principles are so important. They're so important because we're starting from the beginning. We're our designer. We're choosing the fabrics. We're choosing where they go to not put the thicker fabrics on the bottom. It makes so much sense. Just sometimes I think we need to hear it. And as we change over the years and our bodies change and our likes change, sometimes we pick out things we like rather than them liking us, I think is often what I say. And I just think it makes a lot of sense when we hear it. We just need to hear it and remember it. The word is balance. So balance between body, balance between fabrics, balance, and it'll all keep us looking our very best. 
Over the years of sewing education, many interesting words of advice have been collected regarding garment interfacings. But what's happening today in the world of interfacing for garment construction? Join us next time on Fit to Stitch. Fit to Stitch is made possible by Kai Scissors. Plano Sewing Center. Elliot Berman Textiles. Benno's Buttons, Imitation of Life, In Clutch Nails, To order a four DVD set of Fit to Stitch Series 11, please visit our website at fittostitch.com.